we decided to come up with this national webcon for the 21st century researchers and educators with a team responding to the challenges of internationalization amidst difficult times through research in the academe. This webcon is designed for all educators and researchers in public and private elementary, secondary, and higher educational institutions. I am happy to see that we have a great number of confirmed participants from different parts of the country. And as expected, we are expected to start at exactly 9.30 a.m. today. So without further ado, let's proceed now to the formal start of our web conference or our day one of the web conference. I would like everyone now to be in silence for the prayer. Let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of gathering us today. We glorify you for this event and thank you for every person that is with us today. May you guide our speaker so that he would be able to effectively impart his God-given wisdom to all of us. May he be blessed as he continues to share his expertise to everyone who needs them. Continue to protect our nation and all of our brothers and sisters that we may be able to defeat this pandemic. Keep us safe, O Lord. Amen. To formally welcome us in this three-day web conference, let us have Professor Emmy Jan Indonila Palmani, National President of PAIS I-21, for her opening or welcome remarks. Let us give her a virtual round of applause. Hello. Hello, Sir Jose. Hi, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. So to my co-21st century educators, a pleasant morning to all. I would like to thank you for the support you have been showing our organization, the Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators Incorporated, and our affiliated organizations. Your virtual presence today is already an indication that you are all eager to upgrade your learning as 21st century educators, that you are ready to respond to the challenges in our profession amidst this COVID-19 pandemic. This is a three-day national webcon where we will have six esteemed speakers to talk about timely topics about academic research. We all know that research is already a twin sister or brother of our profession. It's make us level up and upgrade our knowledge, not only for our professional growth, but also to deliver upgraded lessons to our students for they deserve quality education from quality teachers as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not keep you waiting. In behalf of PICE 21 and our affiliated organizations, I, Mrs. Emijan and Dunila Palmani, welcome you all to our national webcon for the 21st century researchers and educators with the theme, Responding to the Challenges of Internationalization Amidst Difficult Times Through Research in the Academe. Let us all keep on learning and always look for the good in everything. Thank you so much and mabuhay. Okay, there you have it. The National President of PISAI 21, Mrs. Amidjan Indonila Palmani. Okay, before I formally introduce to you our speaker, I would like everyone listening to the different platforms we have to effectively and responsibly use the chat function in raising your questions. You can write your questions or insights while our speaker is having his discussion, but expect it to be answered during the question and answer portion. We will be having the open forum after the speaker's presentation. To those who would like to personally ask questions, you may also press the raise hand button, but we will be notifying you or we will, I will be notifying you ahead if you are recognized. It is now time for me to introduce our first speaker. Our speaker for this morning is the present vice president for Research and Extension of City College of Angeles in Angeles City, Pampanga. 
He is currently the president of the Pampanga Research Educators Organization, or PREO, and of the Association of Local Colleges and Universities, Region 3, Research Council, and a regular member of the Research Council of the Philippines, or NCRP, under the Social Science Division. He has obtained his degree Bachelor of Arts, major in Economics, at the University of the Philippines in Diliman in 2006. He has finished his degree in Master in Business Administration at Angeles University Foundation and received a Benemeritus Mark in 2010. His doctor in business administration at the Philippine Women's University with an, with an excellent mark in 2013 and is presently taking doctor of philosophy in business administration at the University of the Visayas. Our speaker has been in the academe for now 15 years. He'd been an adjunct lecturer at UCSI University in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia and a graduate and postgraduate guest lecturer at Polytechnic University of the Philippines in Manila, Holy Angel University, and University of Assumption and the University of the Visayas in Cebu City, teaching advanced statistics using software, methods of research, organizational behavior, strategic management, marketing management, and other related business and management courses, adding to his experience in publishing business researches. He has published several research outputs in referee journals, including those indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. He was also designated by the Commission on Higher Education, Region 3, as the thematic focal lead for research in the Regional Higher Education Consortium to design a regional research agenda for 2020-2022. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the recognized young business educator and multi-awarded researcher, Mr. Jean Paolo G. Lacap, DBM, RMP, AMED, RBE, DBE. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for for that um, um, for introducing me for those um, words that you have mentioned. Um, again, thank you very much um, for inviting me as one of the guest speakers uh, for this uh, national webcon for the 21st century researchers and educators. I am very much happy and privileged um, to be part of your research um, activity today. And um, of course, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all the organizers um, and partner organizations uh, of this um, great event. Okay, so let me share first my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so I think I am the first speaker. Um, even though I am the first speaker, I will uh, I will be actually giving you ideas already on how to publish papers. Um, in this topic, I will be sharing with you my journey in terms of research publication, and I will be giving you some tips and recommendations on how you can publish also your research papers in reputable international journals. Um, I am so sure that all of you, um, we all have our research um, aspirations. We, also, we always have that goal to publish our research papers in reputable international journals. Of course, there are several reasons why we are, um, we want to do and we want to publish research papers. One, of course, um, the ultimate goal should always be we, we should be publishing our research paper because we want wider dissemination of our research outputs. And at the same time, publication is our vehicle in order for us um, um, to to produce knowledge that are basically needed by our um, specific field. Um, number two, of course, we are publishing our research papers simply because um, this will help us in our career in the academy. Okay, so um, in this morning presentation, I will be sharing with you um, some of the things that you need to know and need to learn when it comes to research publications. And I will also be sharing with you what are the things that you need to avoid. Okay, when we talk about research publication, we know for a fact um, that if we want to, to have a great career in the academe, okay, um, research will always be um, one of the important factors. 
um, in most, for example, in most state universities and colleges and even in private higher education institutions, um, research is, mu is much given premium in terms of our promotion and ranking. Um, you will also see today um, that most of the um, different organizations, particularly those organizations that, that rank universities, in terms of quality education, they, they put so much premium in research. Um, those who are considered now top universities are also those um, universities um, that put premium in terms of research. That's the reason you will see if you will be, um, if you are updated with the different um, rankings, world university rankings in the world, uh, for instance, let's say in the Philippines, those universities that are ranked or that are part of this uni uh, world university rankings are those universities that put premium in terms of um, research publication and research dissemination. Okay, And in this presentation, I will be highlighting the importance of research and why research is very vital when it comes to sustainability of an academic education institution. Okay, so throughout my presentation, I will be sharing um, different points of view. One, from a point of view of a reviewer, um, I am currently um, part of different um, journals. Um, I am also part of um, editorial board and review board of top journals, including those journals that are indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. So currently, um, I have been doing a lot of review or evaluating a lot of research papers in different um, Scopus and Web of Science um, journals, including um, Asia Pacific Social Science Review, which is published by De La Salle University. Currently, it is a Q2 journal. Um, this is one of the best um, journals um, um, published in, 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 a, in, in a higher education institution in, the, in our country. I am also a reviewer now of uh, Sage Open. Okay, if you are familiar with Sage Open uh, and, and also International Journal of Organizational Analysis, um, Journal of Marketing Analytics, um, DLSU Business and uh, Business and Economics Review, and also Advances in Hospitality and Tourism Research. So most of the things that I will be sharing with you this morning are basically based on my experience as a reviewer or evaluators of evaluator rather of um, of these journals. Okay. Number two, I will also be um, taking the point of view as a researcher. Um, I have been, I have published um, 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 research papers in different journals, including, um, of course, Asia Pacific Social Science Review. Um, I have publication also in Advances in Hospitality and Tourism Research, um, Journal of Science and Technology Policy Management of Emerald, um, Asian Geographer of um, Taylor and Francis. Um, International Journal of Economics and Management of, um, the, I think this is from one of the universities in Malaysia. Um, this one is another journal, which is Asian Academy of Management Journal, which is also from Malaysia, and British Food Journal, which is one of the, actually, this is the leading journal in food and food-related um, topics. Okay, so basically, all, my, all the things that I will be sharing with you are based on my experience as a published researcher and at the same time um, as reviewers of these different journals. Okay? So, of course, there are different ways on how we can publish our research papers. Um, the easiest way will always be publishing our research papers through our in-house journals. So when we talk about in-house journals, these are journals that are available in our institutions. So I think that's the easiest way. Number two, you can also publish your papers in local journals that are usually published by scholarly associations and higher education institutions. Um, we also have international journals, which can be published by scholarly associations or uh, by universities, such as um, the different journals now available, for example, in Ma uh, Manila schools. And of course, I think the ultimate aim now will always be we, we want to publish our research papers in Scopus or Web of Science Index journals. Um, for instance, let's say in state universities and colleges, um, I think it is a requirement for them now to have at least one um, publication in Scopus or Web of Science before they will have, for example, their professorial rank. 
Okay, so if we will, if they will, if they are aiming, or if one is aiming for a professor rank, and uh, the requirement for SOOCs will always be at least one. I think one publication in Scopus and Web of Science. Same is true also with private higher education institutions. Um, there are a lot of universities now that are rewarding faculty members. Okay, uh, particularly those faculty members that have publication with Scopus and Web of Science index journals because. Um, in Asia, um, most of the universities now put premium also um, to these journals that are indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. Because if we will be um, comparing these journals with other journals, typically they have a very stringent review process. So the evaluation is quite as stringent as compared with other types of journals. Okay. So there are two names now when we talk about um, um, reputation. We have at, um, Scopus and Web of Science. Web of Science is basically under Clarivate Analytics, uh, which was named or uh, um, the former name of Web of Science um, is basically ISI. If you are familiar with ISI, ISI now is called um, Clarivate Analytics, Web of Science. Um, these are the two indexing companies that index different journals. Um, of course, in order for a journal to be indexed by these two organizations, you need to follow several criteria that they set okay, for these journals. Okay? And if you will be looking Scopus and Web of Science index journals, most of the top and high-ranked journals are indexed in these two indexing companies. Okay, so just to give you an idea first of what Scopus is all about, Scopus is under Elsevier. So the owner of Scopus is basically Elsevier. If you will go to scopus.com, okay, um, um, you will be able to have um, a list of all those um, journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. So the first thing that you can do is, of course, um, this is the logo of Scopus. Um, as I mentioned, this is the logo of Elsevier because Scopus is under Elsevier. And if you want, for example, um, um, if you want to look for a particular journal, you can simply type the subject or your um, your field here. And, and, and this uh, site will suggest um, all those journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. Or if you want to have a list or a complete list of all those um, um, journals that are currently indexed in Scopus, um, you can actually download an Excel file in this um, link um, in order for you to know um, whether a, a particular journal is currently indexed or not. Um, because today, Scopus is also um, actually cleaning their list of those index uh, in their in their in, in their database simply because of the idea or there are journals that are considered predatory okay so they are now in the process of cleaning their data um, um, every now and then they usually give us an updated list um, every now and then also they are also giving us discontinued list of journals so when we say discontinued list of journals these are journals that are there that these are journals that were removed from the database of Scopus simply because of some um, um, practices that are not aligned with the, um, with the uh, uh, policies and guidelines of Scopus, okay? So it is very important for every researchers to be familiar with this one because we do not want to publish our papers in predatory journals, okay? Number two, if you want to know um, details about journals that are currently indexed naman on Web of Science, you can go to clarivate.com, okay? And you can basically click master journal list. If you will be clicking this master journal list, um, you will be directed to the complete list also of journals that are currently indexed in Web of Science. Or if you have, for example, a particular journal that you want to check whether um, that journal is really indexed in Web of Science, you can simply type the name or the ISSN um, of that journal here, and it will um, actually verify whether that journal is currently indexed or not. Same with Scopus, uh, Web of Science is quite also stringent now um, in, in identifying those journals that should be indexed in their company. Um, every now and then also they have, um, they are also quote unquote cleaning also their list because they, they do not want to index um, predatory journals also. Okay, so these are the two websites that are very important for, um, to any Filipino researcher. Okay, but the question, of course, is what differentiates um, web of uh, Scopus and web of science index journals from other journals. 
Okay? So ano bang pagkakaiba ng mga journals that are currently indexed in Scopus and Web of Science, particularly those that are termed as high-rank journals or high-impact journals compared with other journals? My simple answer is basically the stringent peer review process. Okay? If you will be looking the the peer review process of these top journals that are currently indexed in Scopus and Web of Science, their evaluation process is quite stringent. Okay? Um, typically, the review process, they follow a double-blind review. So when we talk about double-blind review, it is a type of review process or a, an evaluation process of our research papers wherein the, the, your paper will be evaluated by two evaluators, which are known as the review, reviewers. And these two um, reviewers basically will evaluate your papers based on certain parameters that the journal set okay, um, for, for each of the articles submitted. Okay, um, why it is called um, double blind review? Simply because these reviewers um, will not, uh, these reviewers will have no idea who are the authors, okay, and the affiliation of um, the uh, of of uh, of the paper or the article submitted to them. Um, in order, of course, the primary reason is to avoid certain biases. Kaya uh, they follow the double blind review. <coughs> And if you will be looking, the whole process of, of the review is usually it is like this. Um, this is for Elsevier, but most journals, they follow the same flow also for the review, uh, review process. So if you will be looking um, the process of um, um, Elsevier, typically if you have new submission here, um, everything starts with new submission and your first paper or the paper will be received by the editor-in-chief or sometimes the assistant editor-in-chief um, who has the power called editorial review. Okay, actually the editor-in-chief can automatically accept or reject your paper and go through a particular peer review process. So it means if you have new submission, the editor-in-chief will decide if your paper will push through with review or not. Okay, that's the power of the editor-in-chief. Okay, so um, the editor-in-chief has the editorial rejection. Ibig sabihin, if, for example, the editor-in-chief feels that your paper is not um, aligned with the scope of the journal, or if the uh, if the editor editor in chief feels that your paper is not well written, then the editor in chief can automatically reject your paper. So tawag natin don editorial rejection. So it means if the editor in chief automatically rejects your paper, your paper will not undergo any more with peer review. Okay, so um, that is what we call editorial rejection. But for example, let's say um, the editor-in-chief, based on his or her initial assessment, the content is good, the topic is okay, then that would be the time that the editor-in-chief will send your paper to peer reviewers. Okay, so the, usually, as I mentioned, um, they follow the double-blind review. So usually, we have two reviewers okay, for the uh, evaluation process. And the two reviewers um, have the power to give comments, provide suggestions, and at the same time, they will tell you um, the initial quote-unquote results of your review. Okay, so typically the reviewer will give you four possible scores or four possible evaluation results. One is what we call accept. Okay, without uh, accept as it is. When I say accept as it is, it means um, they feel that your paper um, is excellent and they feel that you, your, the content of your paper really followed the requirement of the journal. Um, the paper is well written. So that's number one. Number two, it can also be accept with minor revision. Um, it means that your paper is accepted, but you need to revise some, some parts of your paper. Number three, it can be um, accept with major revision. It means um, your paper is accepted, but you need to comply um, with the suggestions and recommendations because there are, um, or many of the parts of your paper needs improvement. And of course, the last one is reject. Okay, so when we say reject, it means the reviewer are not satisfied with the contents of your paper. Okay, so if, for example, your paper um, was accepted um, by these reviewers, that would be the time that your paper will be sent to you and you need to, um, do, to do the revisions needed by the paper. 
Okay? So usually the journal will give you um, ample time to, to, to um, um, revise your paper. Of course, the, the time given to you uh, vary in terms of the different journals. May mga journals na nagbibigay lang ng two weeks. There are journals that will give you one month to comply. There are journals that will give you two months um, to comply with the revisions. Okay, so once you re once you revise your paper, then you will be submitting again your paper to the journal, and the editor will check whether you complied with the requirements of the reviewers or not. So, for instance, let's say if um, the editor in chief feels that you complied with the requirements um, given to you by the peer reviewer, that would be the time that the editor in chief will accept your paper for public uh, possible publication. Then you just need to wait. Uh, for an email that will be sent to you because they will give you the tentative date of the publication of your paper. So typically, that's the process of what we call peer reviewing. Okay, so if you will be looking at it, um, if we will be comparing um, the peer review process of these um, top journals or high rank journals, typically, um, it is quite stringent. Uh, for instance, let's say for journals that are currently indexed in Q1 or Q2, uh, Q2 journals, um, these are um, top rank journals. Typically, they only have acceptance rate of around 10 to 20 percent. So, ibig sabihin sa sampung nagsasubmit, usually isa or dalawa lang ang ina-accept. Um, of course, the basic reason for this one is they are basically looking for quality papers. Okay, because they need to also um, maintain their reputation as Q1 or Q2 journals. Okay, um, this is um, the reason also why you will see if you want, for example, to, to read novel papers or papers that are quite new in the field, then you need to go to publish papers to these top um, rank journals or high, uh, high impact journals, okay, because they produce quality research papers. So basically, that's the typical um, peer review process. When we talk about um, um, journals that are currently indexed in Scopus and Web of Science, and usually these are what we call um, high rank journals, okay? So as I mentioned, um, the stringent peer review process, um, they follow the double blind review. And if we will have a simple illustration, ganito ang itsura ng peer review process. If you are this guy, okay, of course, your goal is for your paper to be accepted for publication. So kapag nag-submit ka ng paper sa journal sometimes, lalo na if the reviewers will give you their, 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 evaluation, um, their evaluation, usually kapag ni-revise mo na hindi mo na nakikilala yung paper mo. Simply because um, um, these reviewers, these editors of these journals uh, will basically scrutinize your paper. Um, of course, as I mentioned, this is their way to maintain the quality. Okay, um, that they, they want for their journals. Okay, so this is a simple illustration of the peer review process. Okay, so um, just to give you the important checklist, of course, um, I think most of the participants here want, want uh, most of the participants here wants to know what are the different factors or what are the different things that they need to bear in mind if they want to publish um, Scopus, um, in Scopus or Web of Science Index journals. Okay, so this checklist that I will be sharing with you are basically checklists based on my experience as a reviewer and as a um, researcher, okay? Um, as I mentioned, um, all the things that I will be sharing with you are the usual things that the reviewers will require um, when it comes to research publication. So ito yung mga factors na tinitignan namin usually um, bago namin ibigay yung verdict namin, okay, for the paper. Okay, so these are the important checklist. One is basically novelty of topic. Okay, if you want to publish your paper um, in, in top journals or high impact journals such as Q1, Q2, or even Q3 journals, okay, always go for a topic that is quite novel. Okay, so when I say novel topic, it is something that is unique. It is something that will really add value to our field. Um, let's have an example. Uh, uh, of course, in our uh, my field is in the field of business and management. Uh, typically, most of the papers that I see are um, are usually uh, measuring or investigating, for example, satisfaction. Okay, so if, for example, if your paper has something to do in the measurement of customer satisfaction, 
um, there's a low chance for your paper to be published in high high impact journals. Okay, simply because um, customer satisfaction has been um, uh, actually this is one of the topics that is commonly utilized. Okay, so usually they will reject a paper if your topic is not that too novel or it is not quite um, unique in terms of, um, of course, in terms of the content of your paper and uh, the topic in general. Okay, um, reviewers will always look for um, topics that will really add value, as I mentioned. Okay, so novelty of topic is very important. Okay, um, there are certain journals that will basically automatically reject at the editorial level if they feel that your topic is is not novel or it is not uh, it is not unique, um, even though your paper is written so well. Okay, so it is very important for you to think of topics that are quite novel. So that's number one. Number two, in terms of paper content, um, typically most of the journals they follow the IMRAD format. Okay, and um, in in the point of view of reviewers and even the editor, they will always look for an excellent content. Okay, but what is what is an excellent content? One, they will be looking for for an introduction. Um, in your paper, okay, that will um, really, um, or that will provide, okay, um, a good roadmap for your paper. It means if, for example, the reviewer will read your introduction, um, the, 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 the reviewer sh uh, should, uh, you must be providing a good direction of what is the real purpose of your paper, okay? So that's one. Number two, um, in terms of paper content, they will be looking for um, a, a, an excellent literature review. And what is an excellent literature review? An excellent literature review is a, a literature review that one supports um, your constructs of the study. Um, a literature review is an excellent a one if, for example, if you if, if you provided a thorough theoretical underpinning, um, if, for example, your hypotheses are well supported, and of course, if you have formulated um, the right conceptual framework for your, your paper. Okay, so these things are basically evaluated, and these are the things that are usually um, um, scrutinized by reviewers. So paper content is very important. Number three is this is another reason why your paper will be accepted, the appropriateness of methodology, okay? Um, a reviewer will always look whether your uh, methodology is appropriate or not, okay? Always remember that. Um, reviewers will always look whether your topic is aligned with the methodology or research method that you, that, that you have mentioned in your paper. So, for example, let's say you mentioned that your paper is descriptive, but when the reviewer um, evaluated your paper, your paper is not really descriptive, then there's a high chance for your paper to be rejected. So it means um, if you will be doing a research paper and if, if your aim is basically to publish your research papers um, to these top-ranked journals, then you need to properly identify okay, the appropriate research method for your paper. So that's number three. Number four is research contribution, okay? Um, reviewer will always look for the contribution of your paper. It means um, in the conclusion part, reviewer will try to scrutinize what is or what are the contributions of your paper. Of course, there are two levels of contribution that um, you need to comply. One is what we call theoretical contributions. Number two is basically practical contributions. Okay, so when we say theoretical contribution, it means what is your contribution at the theoretical level? Okay, so if you use, for example, this theoretical underpinning, what have you contributed to that theoretical underpinning? Okay, and of course, when we say practical contributions, these are contributions of um, what is the value added of your paper in the field? Okay, so for example, let's say if you are doing a paper on marketing, what would be the contribution of your paper in the field of marketing or for what is the contribution of your paper for marketing professionals, for instance. So they will always be looking for a research contribution because as I mentioned, the ultimate aim of, of doing research is basically to contribute to the field. Okay, so um, research contribution is very vital. Okay, 
um, when it comes to research publication. And of course, some miscellaneous factors such as your grammar, your style, your citation, um, etc. Okay, um, that's the reason um, it is um, a must for every researcher to always look for the requirements, format, and other things about um, uh, uh, the journal. So for example, let's say if you are targeting a particular journal, it is a must for us researcher to lead, uh, to read rather um, the guidelines um, in terms of the content, number of words, uh, formats, referencing style, because everything will be checked. To tell you honestly, one of the roles of reviewer is basically to check your style of writing. We are also checking the grammar. We are also checking whether you follow the right citations. Okay. Um, so you will see here even the minute details, the little details really matter. Okay, in research publication. Because sometimes um, I have experienced um papers that I evaluated. Okay, hindi nila finalo ang, ang referencing style or format ng journal kung saan siya nag submit and the verdict is basically rejected. Okay, so what does it mean? Even though these are minute details, these are little details, and this can cause also be a cause why your paper will be rejected. That's the reason before submitting your paper, be sure everything is okay. Okay, um, there are several journals also that will require you to submit okay, um, a certificate that your paper underwent proofreading. Okay, because grammar is also checked. For, uh, for publication. So very important yung mga yon. Okay, so these are the things that are usually important when we talk about research publication. Okay, so as I mentioned, typically, most journals now, they follow the IMRAD formats. Of course, when we talk about the IMRAD format, we are talking about the formats of a research article that include um, introduction, method, results, and discussion. Okay, um, the IMRAD format is basically a scientific research report writing style that is widely used by international reference research journals. Okay, most of the top tier journals, particularly in the field of social sciences and education, they follow the IMRAD format. Okay, of course, if we will be comparing the IMRAD format with our traditional thesis or dissertation, wherein our thesis or dissertation are usually divided into chapters. Okay, the IMRAD format, ma, format is much concise in content and generally shorter in terms of number of words or pages. Okay, so if you're going to look at mo, most of these um, um, research articles or research journals rather, okay, um, they follow the IMRAD format. Okay, just to give you a run through, when we say introduction, of course, this includes your literature review. Okay, and of course, when we say discussion, this includes also your, your conclusion. Okay, so um, these are the four major parts of an IMRAD paper. Okay, so I will be sharing you now um, specific details on what are the things that you should do that you should be doing in terms of your introduction, methods, results, and discussion. Okay, so magbibigay ako ng actual example. So for example, let's say let's try to look at this paper. Um, this paper um, is a paper that um, was published in 2019. So this is, I, actually, this is my first paper um, um, accepted for publication in Asia Pacific Social Science Review, okay, in 2019. So this is a, a, a paper that talks about the mediating effect of employee engagement on the relationship of transformational leadership and intention to quit evidence from local colleges in Pampanga, Philippines. When I submitted this paper, I made sure that everything is okay. And after actually three or four months um, of review, um, they provided me a result and the result was so favorable, okay? And I will be sharing with you what are the things that you need to bear in mind in terms of the content of your paper, okay? So this is uh, my sample um, research paper, okay, in this presentation. So number one in your introduction, always remember that in writing your introduction, you need to be guided by this, um, this um, simple rule. One, your introduction should lead your reader from a subject, a general subject area to a specific topic of inquiry. Okay, ibig sabihin, if you're going to write your introduction, you need to start first with general concepts down to specifics. Okay, um, your introduction should be 
okay, should serve as a mental roadmap. When I say mental roadmap, it sh you should guide your reader on what is the real purpose of your paper. Okay, so para siyang mapa kailangan when the reader navigates your paper, madaling basahin ng paper. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, of course, your introduction includes literature review. Okay, so if you will be looking at the introduction, your introduction is like an inverted triangle. Okay, so um, you start with general concepts first down to specifics. So typically, this is the structure of your introduction. Okay, so for example, let's have a, a, a very a specific um, example. So for instance, let's say this is your topic or this is the title of your paper. The mediating effect of employee engagement on the relationship of transformational leadership and intention to quit evidence from local colleges in Pampanga, Philippines. If you will be looking at this title, there are three major um, constructs or variables here. One is what we call employee engagement. Two, we have transformational leadership. And three, intention to quit. And the context, local colleges in Pampanga. Okay? Um, if, for example, this is your topic, so how will you uh, structure your introduction? Okay? Of course, if you are in the field of business or management, employee engagement, transformational leadership, and intention to quit has something to do with organizational behavior, particularly people in the organization. So, paano mo umpisahan ang introduction mo? In your introduction, of course, um, you need to come up first, as I mentioned, with general concepts. Okay, so start ka muna ng general concepts down to your specific. And it is very important for us to have a clear picture of what would be our introduction. Okay, so it means you need to have a clear picture of what are the things that you will be writing in your introduction. So typically, the structure of your introduction would be, this is your actual introduction, then you have your research framework and hypothesis, then your hypothesis and your research framework. So typically, this is how I structure my paper. So I start first with my actual introduction. Then I go to my research framework and hypothesis, which is divided into two, research hypothesis and research framework. Okay? So what do I mean with this one? Okay? So as I mentioned, if this is your title, okay, you start first with general concepts. So your preliminary paragraphs should be, okay, or it can be, for example, you're going to write something about importance of human resource in the organization. So do not discuss first what employee engagement is or transformational leadership or intention to quit it. So wag mo munang i-discuss yan in your preliminary paragraphs. You start first with general concepts. Okay? Since, as I mentioned, employee engagement, transformational leadership, and intention to quit is in the field of organizational, uh, organizational behavior, particularly people in the organization. So your initial paragraphs um, um, can look like this. You start with um, importance of human resource in the organization. Maybe you can add something about the role of motivation, HR as a competitive advantage, and the role of leadership. Okay, so once you provided pre preliminary topics, okay, or preliminary discussion or general topics in your introduction, then that would be the time that you will be explaining your constructs or your variables. So bago mo pa explain ang, ang mga variables mo, the readers, the readers have already in mind kung ano yung general concepts na meron ka sa paper mo. Okay, so your succeeding paragraphs now would be discussion and explanation of transformational leadership, intention to quit, and employee engagement. Now, it is also very important every time you write a research paper, okay, that once you have your, three, your, your constructs, you do not simply define them, you explain them, you discuss them, okay? You need to give your reader, okay, the idea or ideas of what the construct is all about. For example, let's say transformational leadership. Do not simply define what transformational leadership is. You need to look for literature that explains what transformational leadership and what is the value, quote-unquote, of transformational leadership in the field. Okay, same is true with other constructs such as intention to quit or employee engagement because this is the part that you start reviewing literature review or you start reviewing literature rather. Okay, then from there, you develop your hypothesis or hypothesis of the paper. Then, of course, the last part is basically formulating your conceptual framework or your research framework. Okay? So if you're going to look at it, 
um, your introduction should should look like an inverted triangle. Okay, so the last part basically of your introduction, okay, would be your research framework or your proposed model. Okay, so if you will be looking this simple illustration, the first one serves as your introduction, and the succeeding parts are basically part of the review of related literature. Okay. So as I mentioned in the IMRAD formats, your IMRAD format is basically your introduction, including your literature review. Okay. So from this simple illustration, you will see um, the reason why we are reviewing literature. Bakit tayo nagre-review ng, re ng uh, related literature? Simply because we want to substantiate and explain our constructs. That's number one. Part of our subs uh, um, justification and explanation of our constructs is the identification of our theoretical underpinning. Our theoretical underpinning will come from the constructs that you use, okay, from your study. Okay, later I will be showing you another illustration. Then, of course, um, the reason why we are reviewing literature or past studies is basically this will serve as our justif justification for our hypothesis or hypothesis. And, of course, part of our reason why we are reviewing the literature is basically this will serve as our guide in formulating our research framework or our proposed model. Okay, so this is the usual structure when we talk about introduction and reviewers will always look at this format. Okay, so this is how they review papers. Okay, so just to give you a more detailed one. So as I mentioned, if this is your topic, okay, so this is how the reviewer will look or how your paper will be evaluated by the reviewers. As I mentioned, um, you start with general concepts first, which will serve as your introduction, and the rest will be your review of related literature. Okay? And you will see here, nakikita niyo yung part na literature review here. As I mentioned, in explaining or discussing your, your, your constructs here, transformational leadership, intention to quit, and employee engagement, dito papasok yung tinatawag nating theoretical underpinning or theoretical framework. Okay, so your theoretical underpinning or your theoretical framework um, will serve as the foundation of your study. Okay, of course, if you will be looking um, published papers on the definition of theoretical underpinning or theoretical framework, um, it will tell you that theoretical underpinning or theoretical framework is basically theory or theories that will serve as the, the springboard or the foundation of your paper. Okay, so it is very important that you need to substantiate why this particular theory is applicable to your study. Okay, so you need to relate your theoretical underpinning or theoretical framework um, with your constructs of the study. Okay, this is also the part that you need to review prior studies related to your topic. Concentrate on research constructs. Okay, so dito po mapasok yung pagre-review natin ng past studies. Same is true also with hypothesis development parts. Okay, in the hypothesis development part, this is the part wherein you need to justify or explain your research hypothesis or hypothesis. Okay, um, researchers will always look for justification or explanation why you have formulated a particular hypothesis. So for example, let's say if you have, let's say, five hypotheses in your paper, all those five hypotheses should be justified, should be explained why you came up with those five hypotheses or hypotheses. So for example, let's say, this is just an example. One of your hypotheses is, for example, um, job satisfaction is significantly related to organizational commitment. So let's assume that is your hypothesis. Job satisfaction is significantly related to organizational commitment. Then you need to substantiate now. Okay, why you came up with that hypothesis. Okay, um, remember the reason why we are developing hypothesis because um, hypothesis um, will serve as our way to, to infer things because a hypothesis testing is part, part of inferential statistics. And if you will be developing hypothesis, um, your hypothesis, remember this is basically your assumptions. These are tentative guests tentative guess rather, and um, you need to justify bakit ka nakabuo ng ganitong hypothesis. Okay? So that is part of the reason why we are doing review of related literature. And of course, your research framework, which is also called your conceptual framework, your conceptual framework uh, will serve as the overall picture of your paper. 
Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kapag nakita ko na yung conceptual framework mo, nakikita ko na yung overall picture ng paper mo. Okay? So, typically, these are the things that reviewers will look for. Okay? For the introduction of your paper. Okay? So, I'm just, just to give you um, the actual content of the paper. For example, let's say, in this published paper, Transformational Leadership, um, I, I did not simply define transformational leadership, but I basically identified prior studies that explains transfer, transformational leadership. In this way, um, I will be able to provide okay, uh, um, um, explanation of what transformational leadership is all about. Same is true also with other variables of this study, employee engagement. So, hindi lang siya defined. Okay, um, the, uh, I provide the explanation or discussion about these constructs. Same also is true with intention to quit. Okay, so if you will be reading this paper, this published papers, makikita mo sa actual paper that the constructs were really explained well. Okay, and those are the things that reviewers will always look for, for a particular research paper. Okay, um, let's try to review the research framework or um, model of this paper. So in this example, as I mentioned, we have three major variables here, okay? So in these three major variables, we have transformational leadership, we have employee engagement, and we have intention to quit, okay? And in this um, research framework, you will see, meron kang makikitang arrow. Each of the arrow here basically represents a particular hypothesis. So for example, let's say in hypothesis one, I want to hypothesize the transformational leadership. Okay, um, can affect intention to quit. So this this arrow, okay, represents hypothesis one. Then the second hypothesis is transformational leadership and its effect on employee engagement. So this arrow na to, okay, the second arrow here, okay, and uh, this one, and of course, um, this um segment or this arrow, employee engagement and its impact to intention to quit. This arrow. So you will see here each of the arrow represents um, hypothesis, okay? And my last hypothesis in this paper is basically this one, okay? If you are familiar with mediation analysis, so I want to measure the mediating effect of employee engagements on the relationship between transformational leadership and intention to quit. So basically here, I want to know whether employee engagements um, has an indirect effect on the relationship between transformational leadership and intention to quit. Okay, um, why do I want to measure employee engagement as a mediator in this um, in this paper? Simply because that is basically the gap or the research gap that I identified in the literature. Okay, uh, most of the literature will tell you that there's a linear re relationship between transformational leadership and intention to quit. So most prior studies will tell you transformational leadership um, and intention to quit are uh, uh, have linear re relationship. So you will see here, most of the studies are like that. So what would be my possible contribution in the field? So what I did is basically I measured the mediating or the indirect effect or the intervening role of employee engagement on the relationship of transformational leadership and intention to quit. And basically that is the gap that I want to address. Okay, and that is basically, I think the reason why this paper was accept accepted for publication because I measured the indirect effect of employee engagement. Okay, in, in research we call that situation as, or that process as what we call mediation analysis. Okay, so mediation analysis in an, is an approach wherein you will be measuring the indirect impact or indirect effect of one variable in the relationship between a dependent and, in, and independent variable. Okay, because in reality, not all relationships are linear. There will always be indirect factors. Okay, and we call them as mediators. And the process is what we call mediation analysis. Okay, so you will see here, this is the framework. And by simply looking at the framework, you already have the idea of what is the overall um, content of the paper. Okay, so that is the research framework. And if you will be reading the, the, the actual paper or the actual published research paper, each of the hypotheses, okay, was substantiated by prior studies. Ibig sabihin, kung ito yung hypothesis ko, transformational leadership is negatively related to intention to quit, then I need to justify why I came up with this hypothesis. 
Okay? So, paano mo malalaman? Okay? Kung paano mo i-justify yan? Of course, you go back again with the process of reviewing the literature. Okay? Review of literature is basically an important skill, okay, in order for us to come up with an excellent um, development of our hypothesis. Okay? So, if we will be coming up with a research hypothesis, this research hypothesis should be substantiated. Um, by, by literature or by past studies. You need to provide your reviewer okay, uh, an explanation why you came up with this hypothesis. Okay? So, hindi ka lang nag-hypothesize. You do not simply put your hypothesis in your paper and that's it. You need to justify. Okay? So, that is part of your um, literature review. Okay? So, if you will be reading again this paper, as I mentioned, you will see that hypothesis one um, was um, substantiated with, uh, by prior studies. Same is true with hypothesis two, hypothesis three, and hypothesis four. Okay? So you will see this is the purpose why we have literature review. Okay? Um, sometimes, based on, on my experience as a reviewer, sometimes maganda yung topic ng, 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 ng author. The problem is hindi niya na-justify ng tama ang mga hypothesis or hypothesis. And that can be a reason why the paper will be rejected. Okay? So if you will be looking at this one, as I mentioned, this is the research framework. If you will be looking um, everything, you need to treat review of related literature as something that is equivalent to your research framework and hypothesis or hypothesis. Okay? Ibig sabihin, why do we need to review literature? Okay. Uh, most of, in most cases, kasi I notice there are some researchers. They always think review of related literature as a summary of prior studies. Okay. Hindi po tayo nagsasummarize ng prior studies sa pagre-review ng related literature. The reason why we are reviewing the literature it is simply because we need to substantiate our research framework, our hypothesis, our theoretical underpinning, our constructs. Okay, so those are the reasons why we are reviewing our literature. Okay, so that is the purpose. So if you will be looking at it, um, holistic dapat yung introduction mo. Okay, so you must have an excellent um, literature review. Okay, um, to tell you honestly, um, reviewers will give so much premium in the introduction because in the IMRAD format, introduction is usually around 30 to 40% of the overall content of the paper. Okay? So sometimes kapag hindi maganda ang yung introduction, um, usually nire-reject yan ng mga reviewers. Okay? So that's the reason you need to really come up with an excellent um, um, introduction. Okay? So those are the things that you need to bear in mind in the introduction. The second part that I want to share with you is how you will be writing your methods. Ano bang inahanap ng mga reviewers and even the editors okay, in the methods section of your paper? Tatlo. There are three things that, are, uh, that they will look in your methods. One, your participants of the study. Number two, your research instrument. And number three, your data analysis. Ito yung usual na hanapin. In the participants of the study, they will be looking for, one, who are your respondents? Okay, in identifying your respondents, you do not simply tell that my respondents are this. You need to explain why they were chosen as respondents. Bakit sila ang tamang respondents? You need to explain. Do not say that my, my, the respondents are Filipino college students. Do not simply say that because the reviewer will give you a, a comment uh, by saying why. Bakit college student? Why college students? So you need to justify again. You need to explain why did you select this type of respondents. Um, they will also be looking for your sampling technique. What is your sampling technique? And of course, if for example, of course, if your paper is quantitative, this is very important, the calculation of your sample size because sample size um, will, will, give, um, will, will provide um, whether your, your conclusion are valid or not. Okay, and of course, sometimes the reviewer will also ask whether the, the number of your respondents are sufficient or not. Okay, number two, for the research instrument, they will be asking you, of course, what is your research instrument? Did you adapt a previous instrument or how did you measure your constructs? Okay, so these are the typical questions 
that are that will be raised by reviewers in your research instrument. And for of course for your data analysis, um, reviewers will look for your research design and statistical treatment or your statistical approach because they are looking for the appropriateness of your data analysis techniques. Okay. So these are the three things that reviewers will look for. Okay, just to share with you um, specifics on this um, section methods. Okay, number one is this one. This is commonly used in the Philippines. If you are familiar with Slovin's formula, okay, as their way of calculating their sample size. I think I think many of you have utilized this one or are also currently utilizing Slovin's formula in calculating their sample size. I would suggest you read the paper of Tejada and Punsalan. Um, to to um, professors at the University of the Philippines Diliman School of Statistics. They have a published paper in 2012. The title is on the misuse of Slovin's formula, which was published in the Philippine Statistician. Okay, this is also a Scopus Index journal. This is the only journal in the Philippines um, that accept paper um, on the topics on statistics. Okay, so you can simply search it on Google on the misuse of Slovin's and you can download it for free. Okay, um, just read this paper. And if you will be reading this paper, you will be expecting that the authors will give you ideas why Slovin's formula is not the right okay, um, 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 approach in calculating your sample size. Because if you will be reading this paper, the authors provided an actual explanation and even examples okay, on the misuse of Slovin's formula. So I would suggest you read this paper before using Slovin's formula. Um, of course, personally, I do not use Slovin's formula um, simply because it has a lot of loopholes. And, and when I read this paper, it gave me um, more reasons why not use Slovin's formula. Okay, so that's number one. So you can go to this link. Actually, um, this is where I downloaded this paper. Okay. Um, you can have a copy of this paper actually for free, okay? So I would suggest you can use, for example, some techniques such as G-Power, if you are familiar with G-Power. Um, G-Power is uh, actually an application or a software. It is free. You simply Google it. Um, G-Power is um, a, a, a software or an application where you can calculate your sample size, Okay, and G-Power is basically is not reliant on the total population. Because most likely, if you are doing a quantitative research, diba, we are always reliant on the total population in order for us to compute our sample size. But for G-Power, it does not require you to know the population size. Instead, you must know, one, um, that the statistical test that you will be using kasi ang computation ng kanyang sample size is nakadepende kung anong statistical test ang gagamitin mo. Number two, um, it will ask you for the effect size, the alpha level, and the statistical test. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, um, your, um, your, um, your um, sample size um, will be dependent on, one, your statistical test, and number two, on power analysis. Okay, most of the researchers, um, most of the researchers that have publication in top tier journals, um, usually they use G Power. Okay, they do not use Slovens. They do not use formula type of um, sample size calculation. Instead, they use software. Okay, and one of the most commonly used now is the G Power. Okay, because it, it is a, 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 an application that computes our sample size through statistical power. Okay, so that's number one. So you can download this one for free. You can simply Google G-Power, okay? Number two, you can also use this one if you want. This is the latest now in calculating your sample size. If you are familiar with these two methods, the inverse square root method and the gamma exponential method. Okay, these two methods um, were introduced by these two authors, um, Kock and Hadaya, only in 2018. So 2018 lang ito na introduced. Okay, and today, most of the Q1 journals, they use inverse square root and gamma exponential method because this is a powerful tool in order for us to measure the sufficiency of our sample size. Okay, so you can simply Google it. 
just type inverse square root and gamma exponential method or simply type Kakenha Daya 2018 and it will give you or it will lead you to the paper written by Kakenha Daya on explaining how to use inverse square root and gamma exponential method. Personally, I use this one in calculating my sample size, these two advanced techniques, um, inverse square root and gamma exponential method and even G-power. Okay, and this is, I think, one of the strengths of the papers that I were able to publish in these top rank journals. Okay, so you can also use this one. Um, this is the title of the paper by Ned Kock and Hadaya. The title is The Minimum Sample Size Estimation in PLSM, the Inverse Square Root and Gamma Exponential Methods. So you can download it in this journal, Information Systems Journal. Um, this was published in 2018, and I think this is actually for free also. You can download it for free. You simply type the title of, the, uh, the title of this um, research article in Google, and you can download it for free. Um, if you will be reading this paper, it will give you the idea on how you can utilize these two methods okay, in your research papers. Okay? So this is the typical results of an inverse square root method and gamma exponential method. Okay, so ganito yung itsura niya kasi software din siya. Um, inverse square root and gamma exponential methods now um, can only be used or you can only use one software. There's only one software available now, commercial software. The name of the software is Warp PLS. Okay, um, the latest version is 7.0. Okay, so yung pinakalitas nila is 7.0. Um, you can download this software for free, um, pero hanggang three months lang ang kanyang ang trial version. So you can use the trial version in order for you to have the feel on how to use it. Okay, so this is the only software now na nagko-compute ng inverse square root and gamma exponential method. Okay, so this is the software. Um, next, of course, very important then in the method section, um, if you will be submitting your paper in high rank journals and top tier journals, they will always be looking for two things in terms of your constructs, reliability and validity of your constructs. Okay, of course, when you talk about reliability of your constructs, we are referring here to the internal consistency of the items that you utilize in order for you to measure a particular construct. So typically for reliability, we are measuring here the convex alpha and the composite reliability. So convex alpha and composite reliability are two measures of reliability. So they measure internal consistency. Number two, we also have what we call validity test. Validity test okay, um, refers to discriminant and convergent validity. Okay, Discriminant and convergent validity are basically two Okay, powerful validity tests in order for us to say that our constructs used in the study are valid. Okay, so if you will be coming up with a research paper and you're, you, if you want to publish a research paper, do not forget to test your variables to reliability testing and validity testing because reviewers will always look for this too because you need, to, you need to justify that your constructs that you use in the paper is reliable and valid, okay? So that is part of your research instrument, okay? And for your data analysis, you need to identify what is your research design and at the same time, your statistical approach or your statistical test that you utilize in your paper. Okay, so these are the, the, the different things that you need to know um, about um, the method section. Okay, so that is the next um, thing that I want to share. The next part is basically, okay, this one are um, examples of software that you can use if you are doing quantitative research. Of course, we have the commonly used IBM SPSS, okay, for um, your basic statistical test needs. So you can use IBM SPSS. Um, you can also use this one. If you do not have um, IBM SPSS because IBM SPSS is not free, you can go for some something that is free. So you can go for Jamovi. Jamovi is an equivalent of IBM SPSS, but Jamovi is a freeware. Ibig sabihin libre siya. So you simply go to jamovi.org, then download this one, and you can utilize this one as your statistical software. So pwede siya mag-compute ng mga basic statistical tests. Like, for example, t-test, ANOVA, regression, and so on and so forth. Okay? So this is free. So you can also use this one as your alternative for your IBM SPSS. 
Okay? So if you are using, for example, advanced techniques in quantitative research, you can use, for example, the software called WARP PLS. So WARP PLS is a, a, a new software now, one of the leading commercial softwares now that utilize second generation statistical tests, particularly PLS SEM or the partial least squares structural equation modeling. If you are familiar with PLS SEM, this is an advanced, advanced technique now in quantitative research. And this is one of the recent developments in the field of path analysis and structural equation modeling. Okay, so if you are into quantitative research and you want to take advantage of research publication, I tell you, most of the journals now, they want advanced techniques, okay, in, in, in statistics, particularly the use of PLS SEM, okay. Um, if you will be reading most of my published papers in top tier journals, they utilize PLS SEM, okay, and, and I think that is one of the reasons why these papers were accepted, okay, to these journals. So you can also use this one. You can go to this um, website. Um, this um, software is available, but unfortunately, it is not free. It is not commercial. Uh, it is commercial, okay. Uh, but it has trial version, three three months trial version, okay. So the next part that I want to share with you is on the results. So ano naman nilalagay sa results? Okay, of course, the results um, presents the key results of the study, including your statistical analysis. The flow should be based on your hypothesis or hypothesis or your statement of the problem. Okay, so here we present the results using tables or figures and each table or figure should be accompanied by interpretation. Okay, um, in Imbred format, usually results and discussion are two separate sections. Okay, magkaibang section. So in the results section, you simply interpret what are those numbers. Okay. So in the results, you simply identify the results. Results lang talaga siya. Okay? Do not discuss yet because you have a discussion section. Okay? So that is the result section. Okay? So typically, we have a table such as this. Kung ito yung table mo, then that table should be accompanied by an interpretation. Anong ibig sabihin ng mga numbers na yon? Okay? So these are the things that you should be including in the result section. So in the results section, reviewers are expecting that you will be um, providing interpretation for all the tables that you have embedded in the results section. Okay? So walang, walang discussion muna sa results um, um, section because discussion is a unique section in the IMRAD. The discussion, basically, or the discussion section, the purpose of it is basically to interpret and describe important results in light with what was already known about research problem being investigated. So here you simply discuss now. So you discuss now the results. In this section, you need to provide new insights about the problem. Okay. Um, in the discussion section, there are three things that you need to bear in mind that are very important to any reviewer. Okay. So kapag, for example, magagawa ka ng discussion section, meron tatlong importanteng um, parte ang ating discussion section. Okay, one is you need to answer the question, what is your finding or what is your results? Number two, you answer the question, what does the finding suggest? Anong ibig sabihin ng resulta mo? And number three, what do prior studies tell about your finding? It means what, ano ang sinasabi ng, ng mga naunang research, published papers sa mga findings or results mo? Okay, so in the discussion section, there are three things that you need to answer. What is your finding? What does the finding suggest? And what do prior studies tell about your finding? So typically, those are the three things that reviewers will look for in your discussion. Okay, so if, for example, this is just an example, let's say you have three hypotheses in your paper. Usually in the discussion, you also have three paragraphs. Okay, so you need to identify first the first result, yung unang resulta ng hypothesis one. So you tell what is your finding, then explain what does the finding suggest, anong ibig sabihin ng finding mo based to sa hypothesis one. And number th uh, three, you need to identify or explain what do prior studies tell about your finding. Okay, so this is the typical structure of your discussion. You will see in the discussion section, you, you will be answering the question, what do prior studies tell about your finding? So what does it mean? In the discussion section, pumapasok ulit yung review of related literature. 
because you need to identify now past studies that are relevant with your uh, findings. Ibig sabihin, you need to look for studies that either supports your claim or negates your claim. Okay? So that is the purpose also of review of related literature. Your review of related literature will also be helpful in the discussion section. Okay? So this is just an example of a discussion, okay, or the discussion section of your IMRAD paper. Okay? And of course, after your discussion, that would be the time that you're going to come up with your conclusion. Typically, in that conclusion, they will be looking for the implications of your study. Okay? So what is the implication of your study? Number two, they will be looking for your practical contribution and your theoretical contribution. They will also be looking for the limitations of your study. And the last one would be the future research direction. Ibig sabihin ano pa yung pwedeng gawin sa research paper na to. So these are the five, the five typical things that you need to include in the conclusions part. Implications of the study, practical contribution, theoretical contribution, limitations of the study, and future research directions. Okay? Uh, these are the five elements of a good um, the, um, conclusion. Okay? Um, in this part, I will just be giving you some guidelines on how you can publish your papers in Scopus and Web of Science Index journals. Okay? So I will be giving you some tips or some of the things that you need to bear in mind um, sa pag-identify ng tamang journal. Okay? Um, the first thing that I want to share is this um, paper by L. Omar. So he mentioned on, on how to publish scientific manuscript in a high-impact journal. And in this paper, he identified the reason why your paper will be instantly rejected. Okay? So sabi niya, your paper will be rejected by a journal, high-impact journal, if, one, it lacks novelty. If you still remember the, the, the one that I mentioned, novelty is a factor. So if your paper is basically same as the, the previous papers published, then high chance would be rejected. So if your paper lacks novelty, ex expect that your paper will be rejected. Number two, this is important. It is descriptive work rather than a mechanistic work. Okay, what does it mean? It is purely descriptive. Okay, wala ka masyadong tines na hypothesis. Puro, puro descriptions lang. So if that is your work, high chance, reject. Your, the paper will be rejected. Number three, it poses an uninteresting question that leads nowhere. It means your paper has no direction. And number four, of course, inappropriate research design. Okay, if your, if your research design is inappropriate, automatic, your paper will be rejected. So these are the four major reasons, according to L. Omar, why your paper will be rejected. Okay, um, this one is from Duff in 1995. Um, he reviewed um, different papers in top journals, and these are the usual problems that they have encountered. Okay, these problems, of course, are associated with rejection. So, for example, let's say if you do not have theory or theoretical underpinning, usually your paper will be rejected. Number two, if your concepts and operationalization are not in alignment. So that can be a, a, a reason for your paper to be rejected. If you have insufficient definition in terms of theory, okay? If you have insufficient rationale in your research design, if your paper is macro structure in terms of organization and flow, your style of writing is quite amateur, and in terms of also the tone of your, your, your paper, amateur, I expect that it will be highly rejected by the paper. Inadequate research design, it means mali ang yung research design or kulang ang research design, not relevant in the field, over-engineering, conclusions not in an alignment, and cutting up the data. So these are the 11 reasons or problems that they have found. And this will be the reasons why your paper will be rejected by journals. Okay? So this is from DAF. Now, um, for example, this is just an example. Assuming, let's say, you are targeting a journal. So let's say, ang tina-target mo is this journal. This is Emerald Publishing. Okay? And one of the journals now is the Journal of Science and Technology Policy Management. I would suggest um, that if you will be publishing your research paper, you need to go first to that journal. Then, tignan mo yung tinatawag natin aims and scope. Okay? Because uh, we need to know what are the topics that are covered by this journal. So you must have the idea, okay, of what is the coverage of this journal. So that your paper will have high chance 
of acceptance. So, kailangan alam mo yung scope nila. Okay? So, number two, you need to read the author guidelines. To tell you honestly, as I mentioned, if you did not follow their, their format, even though your paper is novel, your paper will be rejected. Okay? So, very important. Okay? Sa mga high impact journals or top tier journals that you follow the requirements. So, you always read for the aims and scope and the author guidelines. Okay? Um, number two, um, always come up with um, an excellent framework. Okay? Typically, a, a reviewer will first read your, 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 introdu uh, no, that your introduction, the title of your paper. Then they will jump to the research framework. Okay? Because they want to see whether the title is in alignment with your research framework. Okay? So that is very important. Okay, so I, I, my suggestion is you come up with a framework that, that is reflective of your title. Okay, so for example, this one, this is a study that we did, and this was also published at Asia Pacific Social Science Review. So this is the research framework and this is the, the research hypothesis. Okay, so typically this is how we structure our research framework. Okay, this is another paper that was published in, in, the, in, in the journal that I have mentioned. Um, this is about social entrepreneurial antecedents. So this is the framework of our study and this were the hypothesis. So this was published in 2018. Okay. Um, this is an example of a review form. I, I am sharing you uh, a typical um, um, review form. Um, this is from De La Salle University Asia Pacific Social Science Review. Actually, this is the review form that I received from the paper that I submitted to them. Yung binigay kong example kanina, yung the mediating effect of employee engagement on the relationship of transformational leadership and intention to quit. So this is the review form that I received after actually three or four months. Uh, so I received a review form. This is the result of the review or the evaluation. So ito yung nakuha ng paper ko. So as I mentioned, for example, in this journal, okay, th these are the parameters that they are looking Originality, so basically that is novelty, relevance of topic, clarity of objectives, quality of data, value of analysis and interpretation, validity of conclusions, quality of abstracts, abstract and grammar. So you will see everything is rated, okay, and their results or their recommendation can be accept for publication without any revision, accept for publication with minor revision, accept for publication with major revision, and reject for publication. And fortunately, this paper was accepted without any revision. Okay? So that is my point. If you will be submitting your paper to top-tier journals, you need to review first their scope. Number two, you need to follow their guidelines. Okay? Because everything will be rated. Okay? So these are some of my published papers in several um, Scopus and Web of Science Index journals. For example, this one, um, the one that I also showed to you as an example, the mediating effects of social entrepreneurial antecedents on the relationship between prior experience and social entrepreneurial intents, the case of Filipino in Indonesian university students. So my co-authors here include Dr. Mulyaning C in Indonesia and Dr. Ramadani in Macedonia. These are two great um, researchers also. So we were able to publish this one in the Journal of Science and Te Technology Policy Management of Emerald. Um, and, and this journal is currently ranked as Q3 journal. Okay. Um, this is also another paper um, this, that was published in 2020 only last year at Asia Pacific Social Science Review. The title is The Interrelationships of Economic Experiential Value, Emotion, Satisfaction, Loyalty, and Intention to Recommend Evidence from Attendees of Angeles City Sisig Fiesta. Okay, so this is about um, food tourism. So I did a paper and it was published also at Asia Pacific Social Science Review in 2020. Okay, this one is another paper um, on uh, food tourism marketing. The effects of food-related motivation, local food involvement, and food satisfaction on destination loyalty, the case of Angeles City, Philippines, which was published at the Advances in Hospitality and Tourism Research. This is a journal that is managed by Akdens University in Turkey, um, the leading one of the leading journals in tourism. Okay, so it is currently indexed in Scopus and Web of Science. Okay. And of course, this one, the one that I give you to you as an example, this was published in 2019. 
Um, this one is also another example that I provided a while ago, which was also uh, published in 2020 at Asia Pacific Social Science Review. Um, this one was published, I think, okay, last year, December 2020. So if you're going to look at the article history, I submitted this one in 2018, and it was only published in 2020. Okay, so some top, top journals, it will really take time for your papers to be published. So this was published at Cassett Search Journal of Social Sciences. Um, this is one of the leading universities in Thailand. So this is also a Scopus Index journal, currently ranked as Q2 journal. Okay. So as I mentioned, there are two names now when we talk about research publication, particularly um, um, high impact or high rank journals, Scopus and Web of Science, Clarivate Analytics. Um, um, I would suggest that you visit the link that I provided here because these are the links that will give you the idea of the current um, journals that are um, indexed in Scopus. For example, this one is in the Philippines. So currently, meron tayong 25 journals that are indexed in, in, in Scopus that are based in the Philippines. This one naman is for Malaysia. So for Malaysia, currently we have 95 journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. So these are Malaysian journals. Um, we also have this one from Indonesia. So Indonesia has 38 journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. This is for Thailand, um, 40 journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. This is for Singapore, um, 133 journals that are currently indexed in Scopus. Okay, so if you are aiming for publication in these different countries and you want it to be indexed in Scopus, you can visit the link that I have mentioned. And of course, if we are looking for um, um, publication in reputable journals, you can go with um, journals uh, uh, publishers such as Elsevier. Okay, you can go for Emerald Publishing. These are respected um, 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 publishers, Taylor and Francis. Okay, uh, Rutledge, of course, Andre Taylor and Francis Group also. Then we have Sage, we have Wiley, Springer. Okay, so these are some of the reputable journals, our reputable publishers, rather. Okay, and they carry a lot of Scopus and Web of Science Index journals. Okay, um, if, for example, if you are unsure whether where to submit your paper, you can go to Journal Finder of Elsevier. So punta ka lang dito sa site na to. You type the paper of your title and your abstract and your keywords. Then it will it will match a particular journal where you can submit your paper. Okay? So ito yung tinatag natin, Journal Finder of Elsevier. Um, Web of Science, meron din siya. It is called Manuscript Matcher. So you simply type the title of your paper and your abstract and it will match. Okay, part possible journals for uh, uh, where you can submit your paper for possible publication. Okay. Um, you can also go here. This is for Taylor and Francis. It is called Journal Suggester. You simply copy paste your abstract here and it will reveal suggested journal where you can submit your paper. Okay. So this is Journal Suggester of Taylor and Francis. Meron din ng Springer. It is also called Journal Suggester. Same, same ano lin din siya. Um, same um, um, interface as Taylor and Francis. You simply type your manuscript title and your manuscript text or basically your abstract and it will provide you possible journal where you can submit your paper. Or for Wiley, meron din siya journal finder. Same din siya yung, yung, yung interface niya. Okay? So you will see here, um, as a researcher, you must be clear of what is your goal or your target. Okay, in research publication, very important yan kung ano yung target mo as a, research, uh, as a researcher. If you are looking or if you are looking forward for publication in Scopus and Web of Science, then um, you really need to, um, actually my, my suggestion is basically read published papers in these top tier journals para nakikita mo kung ano yung mga klase na papers na napapublish in your field. Very important yan. Okay, and number two, of course, if you feel that you are really in the academe and you really want to be productive researcher, then make research as a habit. Okay? Um, make research as part of your daily routine. Um, of course, most of you or many of you will tell me, sir, medyo mahirap talagang gumawa ng research. That is true. Even I, I was also in the phase before that I cannot produce any research. 
Okay, hindi rin ako marunong before. But when I imbibe research and, and I make it as part of my routine in the academy, then it is much easier for me now to write and publish my papers in top tier journals. So basically, I feel that research is basically a habit. And if you will be um, empowering yourselves and at the same time, you're going to make research as a habit, this is also our way of contributing to the quality of education in the in the philippine in in philippine higher education in uh, ha, philippine higher education landscape um, as i mentioned quality education now is not only measured by quality instruction quality in education now is also measured by the quality of research published okay so it is all about now research top universities now why they are called the top universities be, because they have produced a lot of research papers Okay, so if you want to be a productive researcher, as I mentioned, my suggestion is make research as a habit. Um, always remain open to new to learn new things. If you don't learn, you don't grow. Always remember that. There are things that we need to um, learn because these are the things that are happening now in the landscape of research. We need to always have an open mind okay, to new learnings. Okay, um, another one from Alvin Toffler before I end my presentation by instructing students how to learn and unlearn and relearn a powerful new dimension can be added to education. There are certain things in research that we need to learn, but there are also a lot of things that we need to unlearn. Okay, I am so sure um, there are things that were taught by your professor in research that are not relevant anymore. So you need to unlearn, unlearn those things and you need to learn the recent developments now in research if you are targeting basically publication. And there are certain things that we need to relearn. Okay, so I think these are the three things that you need to always bear in mind. Learn, unlearn, and relearn. Okay, so I, I actually that's it. So I hope I was able to share with you even a little thing or a little detail on research publication. If you want to connect with me, these are my email. So you can connect with me with my personal Gmail account or my institutional email. So um, you can email me. If you want to connect with me professionally, I have my LinkedIn accounts. If you want to read my published research papers, you can also connect with me via ResearchGate. Most of my published papers are also there. Um, this is my Google Scholar. If you want to see my citations and um published papers, you can go to my Google Scholar accounts, my RCID number, my Scopus ID, my Web of Science ID, and my Mendeley accounts. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, thank you very much, and I hope um, all of you, or I wish you all um, good luck with all your research endeavors and aspirations. Okay, so again, we are not done with you yet, Doc, as we will proceed now with the question and answer portion. Again, there you have it, Dr. Jean Paolo G. Lacup on his discussion about publishing scholarly papers in reputable international journals. It is nice to have examples making the discussion also easier to absorb. In my case, for example, I personally took notes, even if I know that I am actually expected to have a PDF copy of your presentation at the end of this session. It's a confirmation that your, the whole presentation provided me a lot of information, like in my case, for example, being a PhD student. Okay, so again, I would like to remind our participants here that our morning session is only allocated for two hours. We will cater to as many questions as possible depending on the availability of our time. We will select questions raised by our participants here in Zoom and to those who are in YouTube. We recommend you, especially also here in Zoom, to those who would like to remain anonymous, for example, in providing questions, you may go to slido.com and use that number 450-978. Okay? So again, we already have those who are asking for the presentation. We will be sending to you the PDF copy of Dr. Lakap's presentation at the end of his discussion or at the end of this session. Okay? So... Again, I am recommending our participants or persuading our participants here to provide any question to Dr. Jean Paolo Lacap. Okay? Now, I would like to start also, provide question to Dr. Lacap. Uh, sir, you mentioned about the idea and the difference between reputable to that of predatory journals. And okay. you mentioned also about, you mentioned also about how most journals 
are actually following that kind of process, like having uh, uh, having a stringent peer review process and double blind review, so on and so forth. What about sir, the possibility, for example, that the paper I submitted is actually uh, in the hands of predatory journals? Uh, what do you think of that, Doc? Okay, of course, um, actually, the, the term predatory was coined by, um, if, uh, of course, predatory journals or predatory publication has been there for quite some time. Um, this was identified by a librarian in U.S., and if you are familiar with the bills list before, um, he identified certain parameters on how a journal can be classified as a predatory or a legit journal. Okay, and if you will be looking different published papers on, on predatory journals, because there are a lot of papers, okay, or commentary papers that talks about predatory journals, they have different ways on how to define predatory journal. But basically, predatory journals are journals that will take advantage of, um, uh, of, of researchers by publishing paper in, a, in an exchange for a fee without proper review process. That is basically predatory practice. Ibig sabihin, you simply submit the paper to them, they will publish your paper, they will not undergo any um, review, automatic ipapublish na nila yan, but you need to pay them. That is basically a predatory practice. Okay? And of course, um, who are the targets of these predatory journals? Basically, budding researchers or novice researchers or early career, re early career researchers. These are the usual targets of these predatory journals. So what, what are the things um, that you need to do, assuming let's say you submitted the paper dito sa isang predatory journal, ano yung pwede mong gawin? Of course, if you submitted and it is not yet published, you can always pull out your paper and tell them that um, you decided not to publish your paper anymore. But for example, in an instance that the, um, the journal already published your paper, Okay, actually, you don't have anything or wala ka nang magagawa doon because it was already published. And particularly if your if the journal is um, an online journal, it will be a public um, property already. It is already in public domain. So expect mo na yan, nalilitaw na yan um, sa, mga, sa, mga, ano, sa Google, for example. Okay, and you cannot do anything about it anymore. Okay, even though, for example, you're going to retract kasi meron tayong tinatag nating retraction process, still, um, your paper will be there. So, um, I would suggest that um, as, as much as possible, you need to identify well um, the journal where you want to sub submit your paper. I would also suggest um, for early career researchers, um, you go for journals. Kung hindi pa kaya yung mga top tier journals, there are also Scopus Index journals that are published by universities. Okay, may mga journals kasi na Scopus and Web of Science pero they are published by disreputable um, universities. Then you can go for that one um, para, mala, para automatic alam mo na quality ang journal. Because usually if it is, a, it is published by a university, of course, the expectation is the university is really taking care of their reputation in terms of their journal. So I think that is one of the things that we need to bear in mind. Um, there are a lot of predatory journals. I've been battling predatory predatory journals for quite some time. I also deliver talks on how to identify or spot predatory journals. And what is sad is basically, um, even I noticed there are also Filipino, okay, Filipinos who are also catering to predatory journals. And I already spot some, okay, and their practice is basically predatory. They are taking really advantage of these early career researchers in an exchange for a fee. Okay, so for example, if you will be submitting your paper and it will require you to pay huge amount, think twice. And if they will, uh, if they will be um, um, telling you that the publication is fast, think twice again. Um, if they will tell you that your publish will, uh, your paper will be published in seven days, think twice again. Because reputable journals, when we talk about um, uh, peer peer reviewing, it really take time. Peer review process is, is quite a long process because um, journals really want to maintain the quality okay, for their journals. So that is my answer to your question. 
Okay, thank you, Doc. So again, it's a very ideal answer, especially to uh, most of the participants we have here. We have those who are thinking that the paper that they came up with are actually of Scopus or Scopus uh, quality, only to realize that it is actually falling in the hands of predatory journals. Okay, so if you notice, Doc, we already have questions appearing there in Slido. I guess it would be ideal for us also to provide answer to questions you have here. Let's start with someone who asks about a limitation of how many words should only be in the topic. Uh, what do you think of that, Doc? Okay, for the number of words, maybe um, uh, uh, this one is asking for the number of words for the article itself, okay? Not the, the topic, because journals have also requirements in terms of number of words, but roughly, usually, around 6,000 to 8,000 words for a particular research article. Okay, so that is based on the, the requirement of journal journals. Typically, journals will tell you that they are uh, you need to submit paper only within let's say six thousand to ten thousand words. Of course, these requirements vary depending on the journal where you will be submitting your paper. Okay, thank you, sir. So again, we have those who are providing questions also here in the chat function in Zoom. Again, to those who will be tapped or to those who would like to ask personally to Dr. Lakap, you may press the raise hand button. So we encourage a more uh, active participation here from our participants. To those who would like also to uh, uh, to be uh, to as personally, sorry, I would like you to introduce yourself first, the institution where you are affiliated with and your question. Okay, so we'll see later on if we have one participant here who will be pressing the raise hand button. But prior to that, let us have here another question appearing in slido.com. Sir, if we have recognized journals, I guess you mentioned a while ago uh, in your discussion about recognized journals. What about lists of predatory journals? Uh, do you think we have a, an answer to that question, Doc? Okay, for the, the list, actually, we have a lot of lists of predatory journals. You can simply type in in Google predatory journals and it will give you a lot of results. That's one. You can identify a lot of lists online. Number two, you can also go to Scopus. Then you go to the discontinued list. Okay, so they have what they call discontinued list. Ibig sabihin, ito yung mga journals na na-discontinue ng Scopus because they notice there are bad practices for this journal. So you can also go to that. Um, you always need to be updated with Scopus and Web of Science kasi every now and then they remove predatory journals in their list. Um, in, in the world of predatory publication, meron tayong tinatawag nating ano, um, what do you call this one? Journals that mimic journals. What do I mean with that one? Um, we have journals that will mimic as if they are legit journals. So you need to be careful with that one. So for example, let's say, yung Scopus Index Journal is, the, let's say the name of the journal is Journal of Management. There will be a mimic journal that will also name as Journal of Management just to trick early career researchers. So you need to be careful also with the website where you will be submitting. Okay, very careful because um, today I noticed there are a lot of um, journals that mimic other journals. So this is also part of what we call um, predatory publication. Okay, as I mentioned, if um, the, the, the red flag that you always need to think, uh, kapag nag-submit ka, if they ask you for payments, they will, um, they will tell you that it will be a, a, a very fast publication. Number three, kapag binigay yung paper sa inyo tapos wala naman, sabi nila accept ka agad at walang review, you need to think twice. You pull out your paper and go for other journals because as there are a lot of journals that are legit, okay? But there are also a lot that are predatory, okay? So if you, if you're, if you, are, too, if you are very much concerned with your reputation as an academician or as a researcher, you go for legit one, Okay? Um, because if, for example, if you will have publication and you're going to boast that you have publication, tas nakita naman ng iba na predatory journal, of course, your, your credibility is at stake. So you need to really um, go for um, re, um, journals that are really legit in nature, that are really um, quality, okay? That we consider quality journals. So I think yun yung ano, kailangan natin tandaan in terms of research publication. Okay, thank you, Doc. We have here one participant in Zoom who is raising his hand. We have Sir George Lim. Again, Sir George, you're recognized. 
But again, sir, I would like you to introduce yourself first, the institution where you are affiliated with, and your question. Okay. Thank you, Sir, J- sir Jose. Um, good morning to everyone. Do- good morning, Dr. Laka. Good morning. Um, I am Dr. George Lim of Cagayan de Oro. Um, I just uh, graduated as uh, doctor, uh, for the degree doctor in management. So um, I, I have plans of publishing my study. Uh, my study actually, Dr. Lakap, is Sustainable Framework for Hospital Response During Health Emergencies. So since I have been, um, uh, you have been discussing on mga predatory na mga um, journals that could that I could possibly fell into. Um, with the study that I have, uh, what can you suggest, uh, what journal can you suggest that I could be working with so that my um, study would be published, especially that this is timely and relevant for this time because um, this is for the response to our um, COVID-19 sa ating mga hospitals, which are currently on the surge capacities of this virus. Okay, thank you, um, Dr. Lim, for that question. Actually, if your topic has something to do, because you mentioned you are a graduate of management, PhD in management um, in CDO. Um, by the way, I've been to CDO, I think, before the pandemic, I delivered a talk to Capital University, <laughs> um, okay. also research. Um, that was, I think, actually before pandemic nangyari. So I was invited by Capital University. By the way, if your topic has something to do with management, um, and let's say your target is basically uh, publication in Scopus. Ang maganda sa Scopus, they also have a list wherein it is specified ko nung area. So if it is a management, they will direct you to a particular journal. And um, I think, um, Dr. Lim, it is very much important or it is much, um, I would suggest that you publish your paper because if it is if it has something to do with COVID, journals now are prioritizing topics related to COVID. Ibig sabihin, kung ang topic mo is COVID, sila ngayon ang priority for publication. So, mataas ang chance for your paper to be published. Kasi one, because COVID-19 is currently happening, and at the same time, we really need to have timely information about COVID-19. So, most of the journals that I know now are prioritizing topics related to COVID-19. So, um, the, my suggestion is you can, if you're, for example, if your target is Scopus, you can go to Scopus, then just identify that your area is management. They, it, then it will give you a um, possible list of journals that are in the field of management. And um, what is good with today's journal, because your topic is COVID-19, they will publish your f- paper in a much, actually it is not really much faster, but um, it, it will be a priority. And at the same time, all published papers now in COVID-19 are open, open access. When I say open access, typically it will be available for all. Okay, so priority topic kasi ngayon ng mga journals, particularly ng Elsevier. I noticed Elsevier and even Emerald, most of their recent publication, and even in their journal itself, sinasabi nila that um, COVID-19 topics are now priority. Okay, so it is parang timely to publish a research paper. Number two, if you are targeting, for example, um, local journals pero index ng Scopus, you can go, for example, sa management, meron tayong journal available, yung DLSU, um, um, Journal in Economics and, and Business. So you can go for that one. It is currently ranked as Q3 Journal, one of the most um, um, respected journal in the field of management, economics, and and business. You can also go for yung kanina, yung Asia Pacific Social Science Review. It, it covers topic on social sciences. Okay, so you can go for those two journals because those two journals are now considered one of the top journals in our country. Um, if, for example, um, I noticed marami din kasi management journals sa Malaysia. Um, for example, we have um, Academy, um, Antandon, International Journal of, uh, of International Journal of Management Academy, you can go for that journal. This is a Q3 journal managed by one of the leading journal, uh, leading universities in Malaysia. I think it is University Putra Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken. And they publish also papers um, um, about management. So, ang suggestion ko lang, you always read muna yung kanilang scope and at the same time author's guideline para hindi ma-reject automatic ang paper. Kasi as I mentioned, these little details, chine-check kasi talaga nila and only those who complied with the requirements are the one that will be um, undergoing peer review. 
Okay, automatic kasi usually may mga masasellan talaga na journal na kahit na maganda ang topic, if you did not follow their format automatic, they will reject. They will tell you, okay, you need to format first your paper before resubmitting your paper to us. Okay, so these are the things na pwede kong i-share to you. Thank you, Dr. Lakap. Um, I will be connecting to you soon um, as my study is um, new because we, I, I have kasi walang framework for hospital talaga na currently being ano, utilized. So uh, since walang current uh, framework, so I utilized a mixed method but more of the grounded theory so that I have experts or responders to this COVID-19 response as my um, re- uh, per, uh, participants. Thank you so much, Dr. Lakat. Okay, Ayun, you're welcome. Everyone. Okay, there you have it, Dr. George Liam from Cagayan de Oro City. So I personally miss Cagayan de Oro City mainly because it was in that city where I was exposed uh, at the time when I was in the seminary. So I hope that the cases of, of COVID-19 in Cagayan de Oro is now diminishing. Okay, so from uh, Dr. George Liam, let's proceed now to another question appearing here in Slido.com. We have, sir, could you please provide an example of a theoretical contribution of a study. What do uh, you think yeah. of that, Doc? Yeah, a, a, a theoretical contribution can be one, you extended the current theory that you utilize. Number two, a, a theoretical contribution can be you apply the th- a particular theory in a specific domain. For example, let's say psycholo- psychological theory or it is, a, it is a theory in the field of psychology, but you utilize it in the field of, for example, business. Those are what we call theoretical contribution. Okay? Um, because a viewer will, will always ask you, okay, you utilize this theory, so what have you contributed to this theory? Okay? Kaya very important na ma-identify din natin ang yung theoretical contribution. You can extend the current theory. You can also use a theory and apply it to another um, field. That is basically theoretical contribution. You can also challenge a particular theory by telling in your paper that the, pe- the current theory cannot be applied in this type of, for example, analysis or in this type of topic. Okay, so these are these are just examples on how you can identify your theoretical contribution. So you are muted. Okay, sorry, sir. So we have here a question from Amroxan Argomez. Here in Zoom, sir, thank you for a comprehensive discussion. I've learned so much today, but the question is, sir, can these journals accept Filipino researchers? And if it is a qualitative research, does it also follow the IMRAD format? I don't know the context behind the question of Ma'am Roxana Gomez here. I think it would be ideal for us to have Ma'am Roxana Gomez to personally raise her question here in Zoom. We will go back to your question, Ma'am Roxana. But prior to that, let's go back here to another question appearing in Slido.com. Sir, talking about hypothesis development, does it mean that we need to look for previous studies? that have already used the same hypothesis before. What do you think of that, Doc? Yeah, okay. My answer is one, yes. You need to look, you need to go back with those studies. And number two, you need to look for or you need to come up with an explanation why you did you came up with that um, relationship, for example. Um, in hypothesis development, as I mentioned, for example, you want to hypothesize that A is related to B. Okay, reviewer will ask you, what do prior studies tell about this relationship? Have prior studies established already this relationship? And number two, the reviewer will also ask you, how did you arrive with the relationship of A and B? Okay? So that is basically part of your what we call literature review. You always go back with published papers. Anong sinasabi ng prior studies? Okay? With that two relationship. For example, let's say, um, there are prior studies that will not tell you directly that A and B are related. But there is a justification why A and B is a possible Uh, are possible variables that can be tested in terms of relationship. Okay, ibig sabihin, um, in writing your literature review, particularly in the hypothesis development section, you need to properly justify bakit, ka nag, nag, bakit, mo sinasa, bakit mo or why did you hypothesize that A is related to B. Okay, so kailangan properly explain yan. And you can only do that by reviewing past studies. Okay, thank you, Doc. 
uh, we have here. I think can we have a confirmation to this question, Doc? Are there predatory journals in, included in the Scopus or Web of Science database? What do you my think an- of that, Doc? My answer is yes. There are. Okay, there are. Um, because usually ganito kasi yung ito yung nakita kong trend may mga journal na mag-start sila na maganda they have good reputation but once they in, they, they are accepted for indexation in this Scopus and Web of Science magiging predatory sila because they will get money from re- review uh, from researchers now kasi nga meron na silang seal that they are Scopus index okay that's the reason as I mentioned a while ago every now and then now Scopus and Web of Science are basically providing lists of discontinued journals because upon reviewing this journal may have um, they are now currently doing predatory practices maraming marami ding mga journals that are currently indexed in Scopus usually they are around Q4 the last okay Q4 journals uh, typically bago, usually ang kanilang yung kanilang quote and quote practice is like this um, they will have kasi in, in, in Scopus for example in order for your journal to be indexed in Scopus you need to wait for 3 years so usually in that 3 years they will have good reputation ibig sabihin they will not ask you for payment they will undergo peer review but once they uh, once this journal is accepted for indexation in Scopus that would be the time that they will ask you for a fee that they will not review any more paper uh, instead they will just use just need to submit and pay so that is a predatory practice. Once Scopus noticed that, that would be the time that your journal will be discontinued from their list. Okay? Kaya if you will be asking me, meron bang mga um, uh, predatory journals na naka-index sa Scopus and Web of Science? My answer is yes. Okay? Uh, may mga techniques then on how to identify your spot. Actually, that is a long discussion. Maybe next time I can share with you also that one. But my answer is basically yes, meron. Meron then. Okay, kaya dapat binabantayan din natin yung mga discontinued list ni, ni Scopus and Web of Science. Okay? Because I think in in Scopus every quarter they have a list of discontinued journals. Kasi every now and then nakikita nila dumarami mga predatory journals. Okay, thank you, Doc. I think you provided categorization especially in your discussion about identifying Q1, Q2, and Q3 journals. But can we have a, an answer to this question, Doc? Again, for okay. Mr. Anonymous, what do we mean by Q1, Q2, and Q3? Especially okay. the ones you've mentioned. Yeah, when we say Q, actually the classifications now is Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. These are basically ranking of different journals because usually every year, end, end of the year, uh, meron tayong tinatawag niya nating ranking. Um, this is computed based on the number of citations. So for example, ang isang journal, marami siyang nakuwang citation compared with other journals, so they will be ranked as Q1. Then we have the second highest, we have Q2, Q3, Q4. So basically, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 is basically ranking system. Kasi ibig sabihin lang yan, quartile, quartile 1, quartile 2, quartile 3, and quartile 4. So kapag Q1 ka, ibig sabihin, technically speaking, ang ibig sabihin lang yan, ikaw yung journal may pinakamaraming citations. Because citation now is a measure of impact. Okay. So journals now are ranked based on Q1 or Q2. That is also a measure now of reputations of journal. Kaya kanina lagi ko sinasabi Q1, journal, Q2, and Q3. But basically, that is basically a ranking system based on the number of citations that the journal received for a certain time frame or time period. Okay? So yun lang ang ibig sabihin na. Okay. Thank you, Doc. We have here those who are asking about payment. We have here about possible minimum amount that would cost us to apply for a reputable journal, which is connected to the question we also have here, may ask if all reputable journals are paid. What if the journal is offering a free publication fee, but they provide you good peer review? What do you think of that, Doc? Actually, uh, most of the, um, kasi we have what we call models. Okay, ito yung tinatawag nating business model in research publication. Medyo mahabang topic din yun, but just to share you a glimpse of that. Um, for example, if you are a researcher and you want to publish a research paper, um, for example, in Elsevier, typically how much is the cost for publication for a particular journal um, index in Scopus and Web of Science? My answer is around pinakamura, based on my uh, experience, ang pinakamura is 1,000 US dollars. Very expensive, right? Okay, but, meron but, 
most of the journals, they follow yung tinatag nating hybrid business model. What is hybrid business model? Um, these journals are high-impact journals. You don't need to pay, but once your paper is accepted for publication, your paper will be closed access. When I say closed access, kung, for example, na-publish ang paper mo dahil hindi ka nagbayad, your paper will can be accessed by others and the, those others will be the one who will pay for the download of that paper. Okay? Ako, I always go for that one because one, every time I publish my papers, I do not pay. I do not want to pay. Why should I? My question is, why should I pay? Okay? Because one, our university or our college has no budget for that. Number two, there are a lot of journals that offer Okay, free publication and they are top journals. Ibig sabihin hindi lahat ng journals kailangan mo magbayad. Okay? Um actually most of the journals now they 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 they, they are opening their doors into hybrid business model. Ibig sabihin um if you are coming from a university na walang budget, you can still submit. It will undergo peer review and you don't need to pay. And your paper will be published if you fa if if the reviewers um uh, rating is favorable. Okay? So, possible yun. You, um, um, again, medyo mahabang usapin yan, but basically, that's that's the, the overall idea of um, the landscape of research publication. Nakadepende kasi siya sa business model. So, if you are a researcher, wala kang budget, you can still submit your paper. Like, for example, Asia Pacific Social Science Review, Q2 Journal under De La Salle, open access na siya, and at the same time, walang bayad. But, expect that they will review your papers uh, very very strictly kasi medyo strict ang kanilang peer review but they are basically are but the, those papers na napapublish sa Asia Pacific Social Science Review are basically quality papers okay same is true with other journals okay it is just a matter of how you're going to identify these journals as i mentioned a lot of journals now you can submit um your paper to them um you don't need to pay and if your paper is accepted, then your paper will be published. Okay? So, hindi na reason today na, like, kasi dati, I think we have a wrong notion na kala natin kapag reputable, kailangan magbayad lagi. Hindi. Kasi they follow basically a business model. Okay? And most of them, they have now the hybrid okay, business model of research publication. Okay, Doc. I think we will cater this uh, question, the last one here in slido.com. Uh, sir, is Imrad format the same, especially in quantitative and qualitative research, the ones that we are forwarding, for example, on reputable journals? What um, you actually, of yeah. Um, typically, they have the same structure, introduction, method, um, results, and discussion. Nagkakaiba lang siya sa mga subsections or subheadings. Okay? Um, if you will be looking, for example, a particular journal, they will give you v um, very specific Okay, sections of your paper. But still, they follow the IMRAD format. Okay, most of the journals, they usually follow IMRAD format, particularly top tier journals, whether you your paper is a qual qualitative res research or a quantitative research. Okay, nagbabago lang yan again with the, the uh, specific requirements. So for example, may mga journal na sasabihin sa introduction, kailangan may background of the study ka, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it depends lang. But basically, the structure is the same. You must have your introduction, you must have your methods, you must have your results, and you must have your discussion. Kasi sa qualitative din naman, meron kang introduction. Sa qualitative research, meron ka pa rin method. Sa qualitative research, meron ka pa rin results. Sa qualitative research, meron ka pa rin discussion. So my answer is yes. Imran format pa rin siya, nagbabago lang siya sa requirement ng particular journal. Okay, thank you, Doc. Doc, I think you'll have, this is the last question. A while ago, you gave us the idea that it normally takes years or longer duration for one paper to be published on highly reputable journals. And we have those new researchers who are more likely to be dissuaded by that kind of idea, causing them to fall, for example, on... on uh, non-reputable kind of journals, the fact that as they submitted, they're more likely to be overwhelmed, that it is uh, easily accepted. Can you give us advice, Doc, on how to persuade new researchers, for example, for them not to be dissuaded by that idea that it normally takes years or longer period for their paper to be published on reputable journals? 
Okay. Um, first thing that you need to know, um, sa research publication, particularly sa mga top tier journals, reputable journals, the average, roughly around six months. Um, yun yung average um, time requirements for pub, uh, for um, review and publication average roughly but there are journals it will take time will it will really take time like for example two years meron naman mabilis like i think my fastest is three months the one in british food journal because british food journal naman ang kanilang process is the same but they prioritize those published papers that have minimal revisions so kapag minimal ang revisions priority na yan for publication like The one that we submitted, we submitted it January this year. It was accepted in March and it was published also in March. And I was surprised it, was, it only took um, um, three months okay, for publication. What's the reason? One, the revision is very minimal okay, because they find my paper so excellent in terms of contents. So if there are minimal revisions, nagiging priority yan, nam, yan ng ano, ng Journal. Number two, um, of course, early career researchers, they always aim for publication. And one of the reasons bakit nakaka-attract ang mga predatory journals kasi yung speed ng publication. Again, as as researcher or as, as part of the academy, you always think of your reputation. What would be the long-term impact? Kasi possibly nakapag-publish ka nga today kasi... Um, nakapag-publish ka sa isang predatory journal but the question is 5 or 10 years from now and other researchers will see your list of publication and they are all in predatory journals what would be your reputation? Okay? You always think of the long term. Okay? Ako ganito ko siyang tinitignan um, as a researcher I always have goals uh, my goal is basically three published papers in Scopus or Web of Science journal in a year so tatlo ang target ko minimum of three So usually, kung ang target ko is 2022, ngayon pa lang nagsusulat na ako for 2022. Okay? So kailangan ganun. You must have a clear um, goal in your mind. What is your target? For example, for early career researchers, my suggestion is at least one paper okay, na makapag-publish kayo. Okay? So if you are targeting next year, do it now. Okay? Then you submit it late this year para masama siya sa 2021 publication. Okay, so that's that's my suggestion. Um, always think of your reputation because at the end of the day, if you feel that you will be in the academic reputation really matter, particularly if you are in the field of research. I am currently part of um, National Research Council of the Philippines and um, sino ba yung mga kasama ko doon? Mga scientists, they are researchers. And basically for them, research publication is basically ano na yan, easy na lang sa kanila. And they will always tell us, kami mga batang mga researchers na member ng National Research Council of the Philippines, they will always tell us that always take care of your reputation. Okay? Because remember, research is a scientific process. So if, you're, if you want shortcut, hindi pwede sa research yan. Okay? Hindi, hindi pwede ang shortcut sa research. Okay? It always really take time. Parang ano yan, di ba? Kung gusto mo mapasagot yung nililigawan mo, talagang mag effort ka. Okay? Hindi naman sinabi mong gusto, ka, gusto mo siya, automatic sasagutin ka na niya kagad. Am I right? So I, I think that is my simple analogy lang sa research publication. It will really take time. And to tell you honestly, once you... Ako, my first publication in Asian Pacific Social Science Review, which is a Kyoto journal, um, the feeling is very surreal because that, is the, that was my first time to publish a paper. Okay? And kapag kasi nakuha mo na yung nitty-gritty ng research publication, it is much easier for you to publish research papers. Again, it goes back with habit. Researcher, you, you, you go back with habit and at the same time, take care of your reputation. So I think yun yung pwede kong suggest for early career researchers. Okay, thank you, Doc. So again, that ends our question and answer portion. We still have actually questions appearing in slido.com and also in the chat function of Zoom. But then again, I know that Dr. Lakap was able to provide us his uh, contact number or email address. So for sure, Dr. Lakap uh, is willing enough to cater your questions. Okay, so again, we will also try to reply to some of your queries raised after the end of the session. Again, Dr. Jean Paolo Lakap. He is the Vice President for Research and Extension of the City College Angeles in Angeles City. So before we proceed with the giving of Certificate of Recognition, can we hear now concluding words from Dr. Jean Paolo Lacap? 
Okay, uh, of course, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Philippine Institute of 21st Century um, Educators Incorporated for inviting me to this um, great event. I am very much happy and thrilled to be part of your um, event today. And of course, always remember our role. Um, diba meron tayong three functions um, in the academe, research, instruction, and extension. And if you will be looking at these three functions, usually nagsasuffer ang research function natin. Um, if you feel really that you are part of the academe and your career will be in the academe, you need to find your niche. Okay? And when, you say, when I say finding your niche, saan ka ba magaling? Okay? And to tell you honestly, um, if you want to be um, identified as one of the great um, academicians, find your niche in research. Okay? Um, just to share with you, when I was able to find my niche in research, there were a lot of opportunities that opened. Like, for example, in this time of pandemic, nagmagsimula last year, almost every week meron akong speaking engagement in terms of research. And I think um, um, that is um, I, um, the reason or the, the basic reason for that is because, because I was able to find my niche. Number two, um, once you find your niche in research, aim for, for, uh, aim for the goal of sharing your knowledge to others. Um, this is also a way of helping other researchers to also publish the research paper. Um, number three, um, if you want to um, contribute to the quality of um, ha, uh, quality of education in higher education, um, go to research. Okay? Um, again, in research, hindi yan madali. Wala naman madali actually even instruction. But I tell you that once you already have that habit, Okay, mas madali na makapag-produce and makapag-publish ng research paper. And of course, um, always aim for new learnings kasi sometimes or in most cases, what you have learned today may not be applicable maybe 10 or 5 years from now. Keep updating yourself in different research methods or research um, um, changes or developments in research, particularly if you are a quantitative research, learn what are the new approaches now in quantitative research, or if you are in quality, qualitative research, learn what are the new approaches now in qualitative research. Okay, always hone yourself, retool, okay, um, always, of course, embrace research, okay, because if you embrace research, um, there is a high chance for you na magiging successful ka in the field of research. So I hope um, I was able to give you even a little of my knowledge in research publication. And of course, I wish you all the best in, um, in all your research endeavors and aspirations. Okay, again, a virtual round of applause to Dr. Jean Paolo Laca. Now let's proceed to the giving of certificate. The certificate reads PIES I-21, Philippine Institute of 21st Century Educators Incorporated, Zaraga, Iloilo, Philippines in cooperation with CESRAP Incorporated or the Center for Scholarly Researches of Educators in the Philippines Incorporated awards the Certificate of Recognition or participate or recognition, sorry, to Jean Paolo G. Lacap, DBM, RMP, AMED, RBE, DBE for imparting his valuable time or invaluable time, resources, and expertise as resource speaker on the topic publishing scholarly papers in reputable international journals during the conduct of National WebCon for the 21st Century Researchers and Educators with the team responding to the challenges of internationalization amidst difficult times through research in the academe. Accorded this 20th day of August 2021 via Zoom video conferencing, live stream on POMI YouTube channel and PIES I-21 Facebook page. Signed, Ricky A. Kibinko, MATM LPT, Virtual Conference Director, Gina P. Haresco, EDD National President, CESREP, and Emmy John P. Indonila Palmani, MED LPT, National President of PIES I-21. So again, a big round of applause to Dr. Jean Paolo Laca. Again, congratulations to you, Doc. We are looking forward to seeing you again in another sponsored activity of PIES I-21. Hopefully, in the next gathering, it's going to be face-to-face -face already. Okay? So, may I request everyone now to kindly open their camera for a quick photo up.
Okay, would like to ask the member of the technical team to facilitate. Again, to all our participants here in Zoom, I am requesting you to kindly open your camera for a quick photo up. We have those who are asking questions about uh, the presentation. We will be sending to you the PDF copy of Dr. Lakap's presentation, more likely at the end of this session, or siguro later na yung coupled with your certificate. Okay, Sir Jean, Sir John, are we set now for the photo op? Okay, for a moment. Uh, Okay, so panel number one. So ready, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, so okay, so panel number panel number two. So ready, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, to all of our participants here, maintain uh, you smiling down to the last panel so, we have. Okay, so panel number three. So ready, one, two, three, and smile. Okay, so for the last... Okay, so ready. So next panel, so ready. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, so for the last panel. Okay, so ready. One, two, three, and smile. Okay, so thank you, guys. Okay, again, that ends our first part of a three-day web conference. See you again, 2 p.m. this afternoon. God bless and congratulations. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Welcome, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, kaya naman ay hindi pinagpagawala na gumamit ng social media. Um, we should all be responsible dun sa mga pinopost natin. Di ba sabi nga? Pinag-tinan <laughs> Hi, Nako. Are good? Get on, can Uh, hello, sir. Excuse me. We cannot access the uh, evaluation form. Hello, sir. Uh, we cannot access the evaluation form. My balloon, ako man. Oo, maarit to kasi sir. Eh, eh sige, go, go, ka na to. Eh, ako, sunod, ako lang mabalas.
قاعد مع قاعد قاعد Head of God, snapping roll. Ay, Aragui. Enroll, ma'am. Grade 7. Kasi ni Olga, ni Aragui. Ma'am. Tali, ma'am, natawain ko mamaan na, ma. Dok yung ma'am, natawain. Ma'am. 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 Ma'